whew, I gotta keep reminding myself I'm not in Florida anymore. Welcome back to another episode of Fishaholics. Uh, we're gonna try and get out on the Wando River again today in Charleston, and uh, I'm out here in shorts and I actually have goosebumps, but uh, hopefully once that sun comes up, it'll uh, start getting warmer. But uh, we're gonna try and launch the kayak, although this ramp is closed because of the COVID-19 virus. But uh, just like our last outing, if you saw that video, we're gonna bend the rules a little bit, being that we're gonna be out there all alone in the kayak for a few hours to possibly all day. So how much more social distancing can you really get? And uh, I'm hoping we can get out there and throw various artificials, maybe even catch some bait to use, and uh, just see if we can get on a bite. So let's waste no more time. Let's load up the kayak. Let's get out there and catch some fish. Alright, let's get after it. I'm gonna clip off this little soft plastic bass assassin and we're gonna grab this little spook here, try and get on a little top water bite. This looks really good up in this little grassy island. It's like a little salt pond. I can totally see some reds or trout being in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, just had a bite. First bite, third cast in. Oh, there's a fish. <laughs> little snapper blue. That's probably uh, what hit her top water earlier this would probably be really good for like a big red drum all right well for the first hour out here so far we fished this little spook and so far only a couple bites one being the little snapper so now that I'm behind this boat dock we're just gonna clip it off and tie on a little bass assassin and just flip around the piling see if there's any reds. There's a little red. Had a feeling we'd get one here. This was the same spot where we ended the day in our last video. And this was the hot bait. So, a nice little redfish to start. All right, only one bite at that first dock. So we moved up river to this dock here. There's one. And I'm actually kind of working my way back to the ramp because I forgot my cast net. And I want to grab that and possibly get some live bait in a little bit once we have our fill with these little guys. I'm thinking if we could cast net some really nice size finger mullet, that'll probably be our best chance to catch some nicer sized redfish. All right, no other bites on this dock, so we're gonna go to the ramp, get our cast net, and then we're gonna go back down river. All right, so we're probably gonna hit like 10 or 15 docks along the western side of the river and i'm really gonna wait until that water drops out of the grass and then we'll think about starting to get some fresh live bait a ah, little trout here There's something. What do we got? Oh, it's a little flounder. Hey, would you look at that? It's a nice little surprise. Hmm. All right, well, it's been quite a while, so I think it's time to change up our tactics. So I would say we hit about 15 docks and tried to sight fish everywhere in between over the last like hour or so. And to be honest, not a whole lot of activity, except I am seeing 
a lot of little mud minnows in like inches of water, which we could probably catch. And I'm starting to see some finger mullets. So we should break out the cast net and I think try and catch some live bait and uh, see if that helps us get on a bite. All right, well, it's really tricky to cast net effectively in the kayak, but we're gonna see how it goes. Look, there's a bunch of mullet right there. Out of re range though, so I'm just gonna let the wind kind of push me near this oyster bar where they're hanging out. Ooh, that should be good enough right there. Come on, come on, come on. Oh yeah, we got some mullets. Heck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Looks like we got four or five fat little mullets. Looking pretty good. Nice big redfish is gonna love to chomp on that right there. I guess we'll try and take one or two more casts and see if we can get a few more and then we'll start fishing. Oh, I think we just loaded up on that third toss. Booyah. Right, so this is how we're gonna be rigging. I just put on a one ounce egg sinker on my 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, little bead to protect the knot, and then I tied on a four out or five out little gami octopus hook. Whoa. <laughs> All right, that looks pretty dang good. And to start, I guess we'll just work the end of these docks because this tide is getting pretty close to low so most of the fish are going to be pushing out from the shallower skinny water they're going to be coming towards the end of this structure and uh, i don't know if we'll be able to get a fish towards the end of the tide here we might have to wait until this tide swings around and starts flooding and then we'll get some better current flow for maybe some bigger fish but we're gonna try throwing them in there and see what happens let them just sit by the structure on the bottom All right, so no bites on that first dock, so we just move to this next one. Whoa, okay. Just got hit. Okay. Nice fish. He's already got me around the piling. Gonna have to keep the drag loose. We're gonna have to go in and get him. Oh, no, he came out. He came out on his own. Okay, now he's trying to get back in there. <sighs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Woo! It's a nice fish. Oh, yeah. That's the red we're looking for. These fish just don't know when to give up. Whew. All right. Whew. There he is. Whew. What a solid fish. Hook right in the corner of the mouth. Whew. Let's get him back nice and quick after a really hard battle like that. Oh, and he's good to go. Whoo, heck yeah. That was so sweet. All right, so check this out. We've got a three and a half foot of 30 pound fluorocarbon. And right here, you can see some fraying right near the uni knot. And uh, we got really lucky that we lightened up on the pressure just in time. And I thought we were gonna have to go in there after that fish. But uh, sometimes when you loosen the pressure on a fish in structure, they'll swim out on their own. And that's what that fish did. So it's cool he didn't break us off. And uh, now we just got to tie on a new leader and we've got a whole cooler full of fresh little mullets that was still our first mullet that we got that nice red uh, redfish on so we've got plenty of bait let's see if we can get some more so i'm just gonna snip that right there snip this right there i'm also going to check my braid and you know what i'll cut this back just a little bit because i was using this rod the last couple days and 
sometimes the braid can really get fuzzied up if you're fishing structure with oysters. Those oysters are so sharp. And I'm just gonna tie a simple uni to uni. And when I make the loop with my Power Pro, I like to do probably like seven to nine wraps with the braid. And then I'll start to pull it tight. And right before I cinch it down, I'll wet it. And then I'll pull it fully tight. And then with my fluorocarbon or mono, depending on what pound you're using, I typically like to do like four to six wraps around the braid. And then once both knots are cinched down, you just pull the main line braid and the main leader line. And you pull them together just like that. And you just clip the tag ends and we're back in action. Ooh, this is a juicy little mullet. And I like to go in through the bottom jaw, out through the top jaw. Mullet are really, really resilient. And I find by hooking both jaws, they just swim straighter and they don't spin through the water. No way, I think I just got eight again. Oh my gosh, big one. We gotta go in there for him again. Oh, he's wrapped on some structure. Without a doubt, he's on some structure. Oh, fudge. Pulled the hook. All right, you know that little guy's not gonna last long. Just got eight. Oh my gosh. This ain't easy. Jesus. I gotta loosen this drag a lot. Oh. Oh. oh my gosh. Get out of there. Oh. How did we pull that fish out? Whoo! Heck yeah. Third one off the same dock. That second one was probably the biggest of the three. Whew. Whew. Look at that nice spot tail bass. That is a gorgeous one. They're all gorgeous. Whew. This would be really hard to do if I was in a boat. There he goes. But uh, being in the kayak makes it a lot easier to at least get somewhat so close to the structure and not really care if you're like, you know, bumping off of everything. So kind of playing like bumper docks, bumper, bumper kayaks. Seems like all these fish are just hanging right on this shadow line under this dock. No way. Oh my gosh. It's a good one. They're all good ones. Might have just ruined the spot there. I had to go right over the area where they were hanging out just to get near this one. Oh, it's a tank. Yeah, no, 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 fuck. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to go backwards. Oh. That's just one of the challenging things about fishing these tight areas in a kayak. It's like I can't spin around in a dime and chase after a like 10, 15 pound red like that. Whew. Oh, we're gonna have to put on a whole new leader, new hook, new rig, everything. I'm gonna try putting on a 50 pound leader just so I could put a little more, more pressure on these fish. Fish on. I think he's already got me around piling. Just gonna try and keep the drag loose and we gotta go in there and get him. I have no idea which way this fish is wrapped around that pile in there, but I'm just gonna slowly Try and bring them in.
I think I got him out. Yeah, definitely got him out. There he is. Now we're gonna have to try and land him from underneath the dock. <laughs> no way! How in the heck did we get this red? <laughs> so sweet. You know, we were using that circle hook though, so we didn't come unhooked. The hook just stayed lodged in his mouth. And we just had to unwrap him from the piling, and we got him. Whew! Heck yeah. All right, well, unfortunately, I think that is going to be about it. We lost our last two mullet, and uh, I actually went and caught some more mullet, but it took like 30 minutes, 40 minutes or so. And by that point, the tide started slacking off, and uh, we missed our window. So um, all in all, great outing, and it's a beautiful day out here. We caught some reds, and definitely catching those four to like six-inch finger mullets definitely helped us uh, get on some more quality fish and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me wrestle them out of the docks it was just super fun really got the heart pumping so if you did enjoy be sure to give the video a like and uh, from here on out because we still got plenty of daylight left uh, I think I'm actually gonna head to another spot and do some wade fishing but uh, I'm gonna save that for another video so be sure to subscribe to keep up to date and I'll put all my tackling equipment down in the description below and like always live to fish fish to live